what you're saying to me and what I've heard you say, basically the same and the videos I've watched so far has reinforced that in me and I'm able to see that in a different way. I could feel it. That has a feeling quality to it mm. that I hadn't had before. So, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I also could feel it. And I'm just, I'm curious and I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Hello, everyone. I have Stefano with me, and he's going to share his background and his success so far with the out of body state. So, welcome. Thank you. So, as far as I can remember, it was sometime when I was about nine, 10, or 11, I started to have, uh, in the middle of the night, I would get this sensation. I would become aware, I would wake up to this sensation, this very strange full body sensation. And uh, I couldn't move. It was what you call the sleep paralysis. I never heard that expression before, but that's really perfect. And uh, and then I would find myself in some place else. I would be in a totally strange place all by myself, very unfamiliar, not knowing where I was or what to do. And uh, it terrified me. And... Uh, it would vast the experience would vacillate. It would always begin with this sensation, this full body sensation. I'd, I'd become totally awake in the middle of the night of the sensation. I would either find myself someplace, or there would be this sleep paralysis, some combination of it, and struggling and fighting and trying to holler. You know, out of terror. I mean, it was literally terror. It was like a primal fear that just I never. I remember it as a primal fear. It's the best way I could experience it. And then one of my parents would come in to wake me up because I would wake up and start. I would start to holler when I was back in my body. Mm. And they would say to me, it was just a nightmare. And I knew it wasn't a nightmare. And that made it worse because they didn't know what it was either. And I knew it wasn't a nightmare. And I was someplace and it was very real. So that continued on. And it was always spontaneous. It would just happen. And it would happen to me maybe, I don't remember it so far away, maybe a few times a year. And then it increased as I got into like 11, 12 years old and the same experience. I just didn't know what it was. So it was a terrifying experience. And nobody, I had nobody to talk to and didn't know what to do with it. It went away till I was about in my late teens, I guess, early 20s, because I, I, I was very attracted. I found out about this thing called meditation and yoga, which I had no context for. So I got really involved. I looked, read all about it, and I was fascinated. So I started to do transcendental meditation. This was back in the early 70s. And I got completely into it. I was just obsessed with this idea of meditation and union with God and all of that. I, I was raised in the Catholic Church, and it was so foreign to me. So when I, after a few years of meditation, I started to have more of this sleep paralysis, started to come back. And I, I tried to, I wanted the experience, but the primal terror would come up and abort the experience. So my mission became, how could I do this? I want to do it, but how could I control this fear? Yeah. And I tried to do that for, for years unsuccessfully. And I had, I had no idea how to induce them. I didn't know I could induce them. They were just spontaneous. I never knew it would, would happen. I didn't know how to control it. I just didn't know what to do with it. So fast forward to about 40 years old. I found out about Robert Monroe and the Monroe Institute and in Emising Technology, and I just dove totally into it. I was living in Germany at the time, so I was making trips back and forth doing programs, week-long programs at the Monroe Institute. And the technology actually expedited the experience, but it was still spontaneous. I couldn't control it. Couldn't do I didn't know what to do with it. So in listening to one of your your first video, because I'm a new member, you said something about a passive response. And I immediately grabbed that. I immediately saw that's what's going on. Because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what to do with it. 
I was just passive. It would happen spontaneously. And then I was waiting around like for instructions and then it would go away. So sometimes I would just like unhook. I get like this, the sensation would come to be this sloshy feeling. I'd feel myself sloshing around and I would either go side to side or go up, I bounced off the ceiling, go around the walls, put my arm through a wall and, and then just go back. Like I just didn't know what to do. And at various times there would be, I always had a fear of opening my eyes. So I was afraid of what I would see, or I was afraid I would abort the experience if I opened my eyes. So I was keeping my eyes closed. So once in a while I would peek a little bit and it would be very fuzzy. And there would be times when there was beings there. And they would be talking to me, but I couldn't understand them because the, the fear was so intense that the voices in my head were hollering and I couldn't hear what they were saying. And I would say things like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And I was trying to calm down. So about 15 years ago, in the middle of the night, it, I, over the years, it started to settle down. My mission was to get over this fear because I wanted to do this so bad I was obsessed with it. But I just didn't know what to do. So about 15 years ago, in the middle of the night, I, was a, I felt the sensation. And then I felt somebody grab this arm and this arm behind me by the triceps. And they lifted me up and, and they stood me up in bed. And it was two male figures. And they were talking to each other as if I wasn't there. And they, one said to the other, he's not ready. <laughs> And I'm screaming in my head, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> like, I'm screaming, I'm ready, but there's so much fear. I'm I'm just so desperate to try to control it, but I, I had no idea how. And they just left me alone and I went back. Now, the whole experience went away all this time. About a year ago, I'm laying here in this room in the middle of the night. And on my side... And I felt just slight sensation, no fear. And my bedroom door opened. And a male figure walked in and came up to me and said, okay, let's try this again. And there was a reaction. It wasn't fear. It was it was one almost like of contraction. Like I, I, I pulled away from it like that. Just, just without control. And, and it, it all stopped, and then I realized what happened, and then here comes the disappointment again. So this has been my journey. Right. So I never heard about you. I, I didn't know anything about you, never heard of you. About two weeks ago, I think I just stumbled on a video, an interview you did with some fellas, an African-American gentleman, and and I just got that click like, okay, here we go. And I've had that multiple times in my life. Like, I have to go here. So here I am. I think you froze on me. You still there? Oh, good. Oh, okay. Yep. It's just, that was uh, strange. My computer just shut down. Mm. That's very strange. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it's sort of, that's what happens, right? when you That's are strange. yeah it's um i usually take those as as massive confirmations you know being on the right track but mm -hmm. um be, before before the whole meeting just got cut off well, what i was saying is that you've had this experience your entire life and based off everything that you said the mm -hmm. thing that has prevented you from accessing information is fear it's mm -hmm. the number one thing that you hear me talk about a lot, which is getting rid of fear, because it's a thing that has prevented me from accessing the things that I'm accessing. And as soon as that is gone, literally you pierce through the veil and access and access the nature of reality again, the other side, fully and completely. You talked about the beings also telling you that you're you're not ready. I I would say that's due to fear, not not necessarily that you're not ready to um leave the body because you you are you've been doing this forever you know based based out based off uh you being a kid just not being able to control it but there are certain things that um 
that are that are seen that can put somebody into more fear, even though it's almost like, you know, if the person's not ready, so sometimes you shouldn't um, um, say certain things based off a certain consciousness level. But as soon as you get rid of fear, I mean, you're, like I said before, you're, you're piercing through everything at that point. Um, what was your, what was your last, your latest out of body experience? Could, what was the most recent one? It was the one that I described before we we got shut down, where a male figure walked through my bedroom door, yep, and came like right up to the bed, and it was shocking, yeah. and and it was like it was so shocking I thought maybe it was a burglar, you know I mean it was just shocking, and he came up really fast and said okay let's try this again, yeah. Abort aborted you know just like always. Yeah. But this time, there wasn't a primal fear. I noticed this. I have to say this. Through the decades, the fear is getting less and less and less. But there's still something there that's that when it happens, it I'm aborting it somehow in an unconscious way. It might have to do with that passive comment that I heard you say in, in, in one of your films. Because it's like, I'm afraid if I do anything, I'm going to abort it. And that's the last thing I want to do. I've been aborting it for decades. Yeah. So the passive nature in the out-of-body state, especially when you're in sleep paralysis, now, be because of what I've stated before and what you've stated, you just have these, they're just uncontrollable for you. You're not, you, they're just happening. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you hit the sleep paralysis and you feel yourself coming out, if you just passively sit there, and do nothing, you will slowly return back to the body, the body will wake back up, return back to normal. So it's a very, when you hit that state, and the body is starting to come out, when you sit up, as if you want to physically sit up the physical body, you will find when you actually sit up that way, it's not the physical body that will be sitting up, it will be your soul standing yeah. Yeah. fully and completely. So yeah, and the being, let's try this again. You know, there's there's beings that I'm I've uh, been in contact with, based off of just people call them guides, right? Beings that I've I've known for a very long time on the other side. Same for every everybody else. So when you that contact is made, it seems foreign at uh, the first time it's made, but when you actually come out of your body and you make the contact, the memory of those beings that, that are coming to you starts to slowly return to you of who they are again. In, in short, it's got what people call spirit guides or or angels yeah. or got stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. To me, they're just uh, non physical, you know, friends that are somehow assigned to me or something. Yeah. There's another point that I wanted to say that as the years have gone on, I have no memory of experiencing the sleep paralysis anymore. It's just a sensation. And boom, I know I know it's happening. I would say because you've done it so long, the body's it's like a um it's like a muscle, right? There's there's been times that I've come out not even in sleep paralysis, like and there's many stories as well of people doing it that way as well. But it's when you become accustomed to certain sensations and feelings, it's it's a more of an advanced way of doing it if you don't know what sleep paralysis feels like. But when you become accustomed to it, getting out of the body becomes much more easier. Like sometimes you'll just get into a state of sleep, feel the certain sensations, and then be, be able to exit. Sometimes you won't be able to. Sometimes you'll need to go into sleep paralysis. It's all dependent on, on many factors. But yeah. Well, let, let me ask you this. What is it that you actually fear? What's... If it was the number the one thing, what would be the number of one? Control, the unknown, the unknown, being out of control. Okay. It's so unknown. And I think it's left over from when I was a kid. I didn't know what was happening. The adults didn't know what was going on. It's like I was all alone. <laughs> I was just like in complete terror. Okay. So l let, me, let me try to put that at ease for you a little bit. The When you leave the body and you're... You're on the other side. 
that unknown feeling, the, the other side is more known to you than here because you've been there for eternity. That's your eternal aspect. It's a place that is always present, you know, and you're not alone because beings are already making contact with you. And due, yeah. due to the fear, you're, you're, you're blocking it essentially as I have as well, you know, yeah, yeah. due to I that. Understand. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying is very clear, Darius. It's very rational. It's very linear. But in that experience, it's like there's no access to that. There's just a reaction. Yeah. But yeah. as I said, it's it's slowed down. It's it become modified because for so long I've been that's been my journey to not be afraid and to try to convince these guys, whoever they are, that I'm not afraid. Yeah. <laughs> but then yeah. when I'm there, it's <laughs> there comes the fear. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a it's like a deer in headlights, you know. It's like <laughs> um so when it all comes crashing in all at once, like, yeah, it's, it's like that. This is where, you know, through, through all, all of your time doing this uncontrolled, the only thing that I, that I could give you is the reassurance that if you could just yeah. remain calm, know that there's nothing to be afraid of, nothing could harm you and, you know, give you that process, then you'll find it's, it's going to be very, very easy, like from that point of accessing things. You see, it's... yeah, yeah. What you're saying to me, and what I've heard you say, basically the same, and the videos I've watched so far has reinforced that in me, and I'm able to see that in a different way. I could feel it; that has a feeling quality to it mm. that I hadn't had before. So, yeah, I, I I hear what you're saying, but I also could feel it, and I'm just I'm curious, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah, well. But based off what you're telling me, I think you're going to get contact with the beings that I've been trying to contact you for all these years. Yeah. Finally, you know, because of um, a lot of the things that I've I've come to has been through contact with beings as well, and also revisiting places. So, I mean, you you're up for pretty amazing, you know, if you just keep on going down that path what what you're going to access especially when you are just calm and fearless is going to be quite amazing yeah, yeah. because you're, you're you're already coming out to to a degree you're just coming out blocking coming back into the body or possibly popping out in other dimensional spaces and not realizing where you are you know i, w I wanted it so bad and i feel like after all these years, no matter what yet I failed, you know, it's it's ridiculous, but it's a it's a feeling. Like even now, it's like I don't know. I I feel I feel very kind of humbled, but it's not that I failed. It's just something about about getting over this fear and the challenge has been I don't know how to do that. Yeah. So this reassurance that I hear you saying, I need to really acknowledge that to really feel it. And it's okay. And there's nothing to be afraid of. There, there's nothing to be, not one thing to be afraid of. You, you, the soul, nothing could harm you, the soul, unless, unless you believe it to be so. And you wouldn't even be harming you. It would just be, you're creating the illusion of yeah. that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I understand that. And I understand that. <laughs> yeah. And you haven't failed either because I mean, it's, you're, you first of all you you've you're coming out of your body that's not a failure right you're just in the, you're just in this process of not knowing how to really pierce the the, the walls that you set for yourself yeah. and that yeah. those walls as i've already stated is or what you said as well is the unknown you're afraid of the unknown due to fear and being alone it's you you're, you're going to be smooth if you could just pass through that and that's, to be honest with you, that's the most empowering thing that any soul could go through because it's it's you at that point, accessing, communicating, et cetera. Yeah. I, I feel very encouraged. Thank you. And, yeah. and, and I, I feel that you understand what I'm saying. You know, you obviously, you know, the experience that's very encouraging. Yeah. I know. I know exactly what you're going through. I've, I've been there before. Um, I've battled with the fear unnecessarily really you know and as soon as that 
was dissolved for me and I my I just confronted it. Like I like there you have to confront with the out of body state, right? It, because it's no different from a near death. You have to confront yourself. That's the thought process, sub, uh, unconscious things all become present. And there's 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 two types of ways to handle that is is lash out and point the finger or just face it and dissolve it and facing it and dissolving it saying that you literally have no control over me because uh, I will this into creation through my thought process. You see? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I get exactly where you're at, been there. And yeah. this is one of the reasons why I'm sort of, I know as soon as you get rid of that, that's when everything's just going to go boom, boom, boom yeah. from that point. Okay. You're already there. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's the exciting part. Yeah. You're already there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you so much. And thank you for the work you're doing for us. That, that's it's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, th thank you for sharing. I think people are going to gain value out of this insights. Yeah.